Right. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to the Talent Development Webinar. This is July 2018, and we're going to be talking about five cool steps to understanding instructional design using the ADI model. So that's our topic for today. And just like every month, we have various uh, uh, guest speaker. I'll be introducing our guest speaker very shortly. So for us today, guys, we're going to be talking about overview of instructional design, elements of instructional design, and we're going to review the ADI model. So the ADI model is the main model for instructional design. Every other model out there actually still is like a, a re an incarnation of ADI. So it's maybe they're adding the DD and the IE or something, but it's still ADI. ADI is the process that um, works for instructional design, and we're going to talk about it in detail. So what is instructional design? What, uh, give an overview of instructional design. So instructional design, as I was saying, I was designing this course on uh, finance for non-finance managers. I happen to be a subject matter expert in accounting, subject matter expert in financial analysis, valuation, corporate finance, financial modeling, business intelligence, and then, of course, I run a business as well, so entrepreneurship and stuff. So I have many subject matter expertise that can help me in designing a course for finance for non-finance managers. But the thing is, you do not need to be a subject matter expert to be able to design courses. You just need to follow a methodology. But it's also good to have a subject matter expert in your team. You should have a subject matter expert in your team who can kind of say, do you know what? That thing you're saying is wrong. Uh, return on equity is not operating profit divided by total equity. It's not. It is net profit divided by total equity. So it's a subject matter expert that will look through your content and tell you whether things are correct or not correct because he's a subject matter expert. But you are an expert in impacting knowledge, impacting knowledge in, in designing instruction, instructional design. Right? So that's where the difference is. So for me, because I was a subject matter expert, I could cut down design time very quickly. So I could design, I could do, act as the designer, act as an instructional designer, act as the facilitator. I had like three or four roles. That's when you can do rapid instructional design. When you have someone that has one or two roles within himself or herself. So it kind of makes things faster. But what is instructional design itself? Instructional design is the systematic development of instructional specifications using learning instructional theory to ensure or ensure the quality of instruction. So, so you want to ensure the quality of instruction, you use the learning instructional theory. And the main theory of what we're going to do or we're going to share is ADI, the ADI model. So we're going to look at. So how many of you have heard about the ADI model? So I was asking how many of you have heard of the term instructional design or well, ADI. Instructional design, I think quite a few of us here have heard of the term instructional design. So I want to talk about the elements of instructional design. What are those elements that make up good instructional design? So we'll just have a quick look at that. The elements that make up good instructional design. Since we're using the ADI model, Instructional design requires an understanding of learning theories, right? You need to understand, okay, it's adults learning theory. You have a pedagogy and dragogy and all those things. Those are specifics about child learning and, and adult learning. So adults, when it comes to teaching adults, you, you need to understand that um, adults are a bit different from kids when it comes to teaching. Kids have a kind of a thirst for knowledge in the sense that their, their brains are still not empty completely, but ready to absorb. They're just absorbing and absorbing and absorbing and absorbing. Whereas adults already have preconceived ideas about everything. Uh, they have preconceived ideas about nearly everything. So when you're giving them new input, uh, there is something in there that is kind of blocking that input going through. There's something they are saying, hey, do you know what? Uh, I already had something completely different from what this guy is trying to teach me. So there's that conflict happening in your brain, uh, not wanting to take in that new information because it's kind of in conflict with some other uh, preconceived idea or, or biases that you have, which is why everyone that comes to training, they say, okay, please have an open mind, have an open mind. But then after that conflict, if, if the person that is trying to learn, the adult that's trying to learn, kind of allows that new uh, approach to kind of sink in a little bit and test it and see, okay, this new approach probably works better. 
But in that kind of fair, you need to have something more experiential for the person to do. So someone sitting down and just listening to you is not experiential enough. So in that your instructional design, you need to understand how adults learn and then bring those theories about how adults learn, adults learn into your design process. So for if you, if you want to change behavior, you know, there are three things you need to change when it comes to instruction. You're changing three things. You're either changing, you're, you're, you're teaching for either a skill, <clears throat> sorry for that, a skill, attitude, or, yeah, or knowledge. So knowledge, skill, and attitude in that order. Knowledge, a skill, and attitude. So knowledge is simple enough. I mean, you go online every day, you learn. You learn a lot of stuff happen there. It's just, just knowledge. Skill needs a little bit more action from you. So you need more practice. You just practice that skill and you become very good at it. But attitude, on the other hand, is a behavioral thing. Do you have, you could learn that so exercise is very important. You learn about that. You could actually learn how to use a treadmill, but the attitude and the behavior and whether or not you're going to start using that treadmill every single day, it's, it's a completely different thing. You can't teach that. You just almost like have to encourage people to, to change behavior. It's a, it's a completely different thing. So knowledge, skill, and attitude. You use all those theories to, to do that. But here we're going to talk about a model, and we're going to talk about the ADI model. So the ADI model is what we're going to talk about, and I think Femi has just joined us. So we, myself and our guest, uh, Femi, who has a lot of experience in this line, will see how we as instructional designers or you as budding instructional designers can design a course or design instruction from zero to, to actually implementing it, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. Understanding the ADI model. So what is the ADI model? Well, the ADI model has various steps. And as you know, the name itself, ADI, that's what kind of signifies the steps we're looking at. So the very first step is to analyze. So you need to analyze. And what do we mean by analyze? Well, what we mean is you need to know the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and by whom, really, of the whole design process. That's what the analyze is. So, so you're checking the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and by whom of the design process. Yeah. And this elements, uh, uh, the, the, in this element, you really need to determine one or two things. So, so we're okay. talking about the, I just entered into the analyze phase of the ADI model. So I just want to say about creating instruction, uh, the very first phase is the analyze. And if I repeat, I said, yeah. analyze really is the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and by whom of the design process. Yes. So that's the first, yes. first stage to analyze. And um, exactly. What what do you have to say about that first stage? As in, do you use the ADI model, by the way? Yeah, I mean, the ADI model is one of the most common um, learning design models used world over. It's like the um, simple and simply, it's, it's the most common model for learning design. There are a number of others that are not so popular, but this one is used because it's a simple. It's very simple to follow th through, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it it does the job. It, it's very thorough. You know, um, so it's we do use it um, currently, and yeah. and and the good thing about it is that it's it's very adaptable, mm -hmm. so you don't have to follow through. Oh, first analyze, uh, second design, and third develop, and all of that. You could tweak it as it suits mm -hmm. the organization you are working with at that particular time. Yes. Okay. So yes, we we use the ADI model. Mm. Excellent. So, in a textbook then, form, a textbook using the form, adbook yes. model, uh, we have to clarify the problem that needs to be solved. That's the first. Uh, so, yes. part of it is: is it really a training need? Exactly. Echo at the background. But is it a training need? If it's not really a training need, maybe there's um, 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 something else. It's not training that's needed. You you have another issue that can be addressed by something else, not necessarily training. That's the first step in the analyze process is to clarify the problem. That needs exactly. To yeah. Yeah. Let me add here that, and let me, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Let me add here that the reason why this step is very essential is because, I mean, um, businesses right now, um, budgets are becoming leaner. Mm -hmm. 
and one of the first budget that a business cost cuts when it's talking about budgeting and all of that is the training cost so really businesses right now are, are more inclined they are more keen on giving money to what they consider would ultimately add value and return on investment to them so mm -hmm. if you do you find out if you if you if you make a mess of this particular first stage in the adding model you find out you might be just like you rightly pointed out you might be spending money on what you needed to use a different means to address rather than training you understand so it, it's it's very important exactly at this point to to troubleshoot this is where you are troubleshooting you are saying okay we, you have this particular issue but what exactly is the issue and is it an issue that can be resolved We're by training, training? exactly so if, if you if you get it right at this stage and then of course what kind of solution is it what exactly do you hope to achieve by this so you're setting objectives at this particular stage mm -hmm. you are you are you are you are even going as far as determining at this stage what is the end product that you hope to see in other words we have we, we've identified the issue this is what we want to do but what exactly do we want to see in the area of change in behavior uh, and all of that is it, what exactly is the desired outcome Okay. of this so, particular process those so are all the things that goals. go into yeah mm. so that's that going into this particular goals. stage mm -hmm. so setting yes. your goals and objectives is very key and i think that's very another a very important place that people don't really get very right that's setting yes. of goals itself you know there's a process for setting goals and i think yes. there's it's called the abcd process of objective setting and yeah. that ABCD process, A stands for audience, B for behavior, C for mm -hmm. condition, and D for degree. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what was the audience? You have to understand the audience. You're setting your goals and objectives. Well, who is the, what's the audience? What's the yes. behavior you're trying to change? Mm -hmm. So, And in that behavior, you need, to, you need to write very succinct objectives. And those objectives yes. have to use action verbs. So you can use something like understand. At the end of this training, I mm -hmm. want you to be able to understand financial exactly. analysis. That, that's yes. not measurable. It's not that's measurable vague. at all. That's vague. Very, very vague. Exactly. It's very vague. Yeah. So you, you need what well, Bloom's taxonomy. So maybe later I should go online and show Bloom's. So anyone listening, you just go check online Bloom's taxonomy. And there are certain yeah. places where Bloom's has verbs that you could use to try and say, okay, I understand it. So for example, you'll be able to discuss blah, 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 blah. That's specific. Yeah. You'll be able to, um, I don't know, give, give ex you can give some examples of objectives that are clear and measurable. You should be able to say, okay, well, how can it, I... A simple way of putting it is, is, is using the SMART methodology. Yes, yes. Exactly. So, so if you can't measure it, then it, it's obviously not well designed, not a well designed goal. If you set yes. a goal in mind that you cannot, after a period of time, a goal needs to have a timeline, a goal mm -hmm. needs to have measures put in place for you to be able to look back and say, have I really achieved this goal? And to what degree have I achieved mm -hmm. this goal? Because that's the only thing, that's the only way you'll be able to justify whatever time, you know, time itself is money, like they say. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at it from just the perspective of, oh, the business is going to, and, and let me just use the example of a business. Um, the business is just going to give me a hundred thousand naira for this training. You forget that that is just the cash part of it. There's mm -hmm. also the time man hours that will be lost because you are going to take people out of work and put them possibly in a room possibly get them to take time off work to log in online depending on the mode of learning so those are all the things that you are going to factor in that go in as the investment into the yes. training so yes. if you don't clearly define a goal for that training that at the end of the training you are going to measure and be able to justify to the business that you know we took 10 people away from work for four days Mm -hmm. we, we we paid a million naira to the consultant to, to facilitate yes. this training and all of that and this is the measure mm -hmm. of and not, you know the return and not forgetting that do... we also the cost of taking those 40 people and for each exactly. person maybe the, the, the cost is for each person is a hundred thousand so that's four exactly. million so the total exactly. cost of this intervention is five million yes. And exactly. at the end of three months, what did we gain from it? So if you don't yeah. measure that in the beginning and you have objectives, you can't even say whether or not you got a return on investment. So, yeah, exactly. So that's, that's key. So have very so the specific analysis, goals. Hmm. The analysis stage is very, very important. That's where yes. uh, that's, 
that sets up the tone for every every everything you are going to do uh, as far as um, learning design is concerned. Yes, yes. So part of it is you identify any logistics as well. So what yeah. are the, that's where we have the condition. You know, I said the ABCD of objective setting is your audience, your behavior, the condition, basically like the lessons you need to do, the materials. And then the degree is the last one. The degree is okay at what yeah. you want them to have. Maybe like there's an exam at the end, the 80% pass rate is the degree to which you want them to, to uh, understand this content that you're trying to teach. Yeah. Exactly. So that's really exactly. the analyze stage. So we jump into step two. Step two or stage two of the ID model is design. So your design stage is the next step, and that's a very important stage. So the design, I would say, yeah. is the heart. I'll call it the heart of the matter. <laughs> so the design exactly. is the heart of the matter, and that's one part I kind of like. In my own experience in designing courses, I have to design it in my head. I don't know about others, but it has to be designed in my head. Maybe it's kind of ruminating or kind of turning around in my head for a week or two. And the whole course from beginning to end kind of takes, it's like a picture in my head. That's when yeah. I know I'm ready to go and start work on this course because I've kind of done the full mm -hmm. design in my head. But that's the way I work. Mm -hmm. I don't know for you, can you give an example of some courses you've designed or some intervention that you designed and how, how did that process work? Well, yeah, I've worked on quite a few of those kind of projects, but one that stands out for me, um, which I recall um, was recently working on um, a what we what we called what we ended up calling a customer relationship practitioner pathway. Hmm. Um, customer relationship practitioner pathway. Now, I work for an organization that is very big on customer service. I mean, that's all we do. <laughs> we, we, we sell services, and obviously, we have to find a way of supporting these services. So, we hire a lot of people that do this. Um, customer service in, in MTN, the organization I work for, is a, it's about the largest um, division, both outsourced and in, you know, in, in house. And um, the challenge we've had over a period of time is we've had people who have been with the organization for a while, but um, um, chances of growth because of the specialization in what they do, um, growth, and by growth I mean promotion to the next level, doing other things with themselves, um, became few and far between. Hmm. Yeah, so really what we had to come up with a solution because it got to the point where these employees would apply for roles that opened up roles that they would normally would qualify for but when you have someone who or all the person has done over five six seven years since the person left the university is um, customer service it kind of narrows your 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 scope a little yes. and so you have situations where you apply for roles and then you get told oh you don't even have the competences to to even be shortlisted it was it was that bad. They couldn't even make the shortlist. You know, it's a different thing if you are shortlisted and you go through the interview stage and you end up not getting the job. But then when someone tells you you don't even have the basic competences required to be on the shortlist for this role, it becomes a problem. And so we sat with the with the management of of, of customer relations and we discussed this issue, and 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 we were we were asked to come up with a design a solution to design a solution that would help. Uh, at least to to some extent mitigate this challenge that they were having, you know. So what we did, long and short of it, going through using the adding model and all of that, we start with the start with the leaders of that function to discuss the peculiarities in that space, and we also sat with the people themselves, did a skill audit, you know, did, did a skill audit, went through the whole gamut of um, doing a skill audit, find out what they already have, what are the skills you have currently, and how can you leverage on this for other. Um, roles within the organization. We also did a um, through that skill audit. We were also able to determine um, other functions within the organization that um, kind of align in with skill. with what they do in customer service exactly. So you, we had um, the departments, other departments like sales, um, marketing, where their skills will still prove um, relevant. And then what we also what we then did was we developed a. A, a, a career, you know, a, a development path, a training solution that would not only upskill them in the area of customer service, which is what they do, um, but upskill them in the area of new trends, new skills, and ways of making their job more interesting and easier for them. Um, but we also upskill them in the area of analytics. So we we got a, we, we designed a solution where they would 
be exposed to um, ways of analyzing data, you know, right. building their analytical skills, developing th that particular aspect. I would find that we, we also, you know, did some functional basic um, IT courses, you know, S basic S SQL. They went as far as doing SQL and all of that. What, bottom line, what it did is that it broadened their scope. So much so that when they now apply for some of those roles, a few of them were confident enough to put in their um, applications, and at least they made the short list. And gradually, a lot of them have, you know, we've had situations where some of them have, you know, moved out of customer service and moved on to other aspects of the business, and they are doing very well. All thanks to, you know, that because that is what a solution does for you. Um, if you identify a problem and you drill deep down, you'll be able to identify exactly what the issues are, and then you'll be able to design a custom-made solution that meets that particular need. It's all about solving problems, problem solving. That's Excellent. what HR is, largely. So that, that's so. nice. So, that's nice. so the design, you design the sequence and structure of the course itself it, to exactly. give them additional skills that they need for other roles, right? Yes, yes. Excellent. So that's uh, and part of the design process. Another part is creating storyboards and prototyping exactly. and stuff yes. like that. Did you do, uh, in the design process, did you like have a... How will I call it now? Um, a mock, or maybe have a, a a test. Did you like test run the course itself before actually implementing yes. it? Obviously, one of the key aspects of of learning design is is using a pilot a, a pilot group, running a pilot. Okay. Okay. Because if you if you if you develop a solution, you might have it like you 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 talk about picturing it in your head, the whole ideation process. You picture yes. it in your head and all of that. Mm -hmm. It might sound and look very good, even when you put it out on paper or on your computer. It might look very nice. That this is what they need. I think I know what they need. This is what they need, and it's going to work. But mm -hmm. sometimes when you roll it out, you find out that the needs are totally different. Um, maybe it could be something as simple as the mode of delivery. It could be mm -hmm. something that you didn't take into cognizance with something as, as, as simple as, oh, these people are, you know, their age range, the age demographics within the, the, the space. Something as simple as that can just throw you off balance. Something you didn't take into account. You might find out these people are more visual learners than, um, you know, they are, they, 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 they're they not kinesthetic. Exactly. More visual. All right. Exactly. So something as so simple as that could throw you off. Mm -hmm. So, with the pilot group, what the pilot group does for you is that you put a group of people randomly selected across functions, across divisions, across you put them in a room and you deploy that training to them. Now they are doing two things for you. They are learning quite all right, but they are also you know the sole aim of that pilot group is to give you feedback, very frank feedback at the end of the training to say, okay, how did this, you know, come across to you. So you are using the whole Kirkpatrick model to do the analysis and then you are doing a preliminary report. Now that report from the analysis of the pilot group helps that analysis from the um, helps you to now tweak further tweak your training to ensure that it's adding as much value as Good. you so, want it to. So, you know. so for those listening, that is exactly the development stage. So that's the yeah. three of the ID yes. model, you develop exactly. it and you cannot develop a pilot if you can and if you have the budget for it, you develop mm. this pilot course and based on what you learn from this pilot course, you may still need to go back to the design stage, redesign exactly. one or two things, then continue to develop again and then you now go to the next stage of the ID model which will be implement. So implement, Femi has yeah. given us a very cool idea of the develop stage, which is that pilot stage, which is one of the most important bits there. So putting it yeah. all together into the training program, that's part of the develop stage. You create yeah. your deliverables, and if you can, you do a pilot. So the pilot yes. is part of the develop stage, right? So the next yes. stage for develop is now yeah. implementation. You've done your analysis. You have an understanding of the ABC process or ABCD process of uh, uh, objective setting. You've de developed or designed the course, and then you've even developed it and done a pilot. Now you're ready to implement. And implementation yes. is at the next stage, the actual delivery of the intervention or the training. Yeah. So you're yeah. basically putting the training to service. You're putting the mm -hmm. training to service, and in that process of putting it to service, you're also evaluating the learners and the facilitators, the funders, everybody. There. That's part of that implementation process. 
So yes. again, once you implement, if you hadn't done a pilot, you may have seen one or two things that need to be tweaked. You go back yeah. to your development stage or go back to your design stage, and which is why we're saying this is an iterative process. You analyze, yes. you design, you develop, then you implement. So yeah. in, in the implementation, as in of this uh, uh, example you gave, Femi, how, yes. how was that? Um, how many streams did you do? You implemented it to how many staff in total? Well, um, it's still ongoing now because we had to scale it because of the, uh, um, the uh, there's a word I'm looking for, Be because the, the, the work there is the pace within the um, customer service is one where you cannot afford to shut down. They walk around the clock. Mm -hmm. So they use the shifts process and all of that because of yes. the importance of that particular unit. You can't yes. shut down the customer service. And so we had to scale the implementation. Uh, we started this process um, a couple of years ago. As of today, I think we've trained over 400 to 500 people, if I'm not mistaken. And we are still training more because it's, um, it has a, we, we broke it down into three levels also. So it's not, it wasn't just about having those track. We had the beginner, we had the intermediate, and then we had the advanced. And we mm -hmm. put in different um, training programs, worked in different training programs into each of those, into, into each of those buckets. Um, the beginner uh, bucket, the intermediate bucket, and then the advanced bucket. So you find that someone who attended a beginner um, program, who started out with the beginner program last year, would get to attend the intermediate this year and then would do the advanced next year if he's still with the organization. So what we do then is we roll them out, working with their schedule, because all, all those, you have to take into all those things into account. You have to work with your schedule, sit down, with, plan an entire, you know, over for over 200, 300 people, sit down and plan, look at their work schedule and try and fit that as much as possible into their work schedule. So we have some of the programs, sorry, sorry, David, we had some of the programs that ran online. We had aspects of it that ran online. We had focus, fo uh, aspects of it that were focus group sessions, and then we had aspects of it that were classroom interventions. Excellent. So you use different media. Now, obviously, exactly. one key aspect of implementation is assessment and feedback. How did that go? Wow, assessment. Assessment is a very big thing because like, it costs a lot of money. And um, like I said earlier, businesses these days don't want to give give you money if you can't justify to them why they should give yes. you that money. It's not just you know, it's not training is not just a good to have anymore. Training is must be as functional as possible. Yes, um, so strategic. I'm not able to justify that. So in 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 this particular case, we had to work in a whole lot of evaluations and not just the regular um, Kirkpatrick uh, four step. Evaluation one, process. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We had to do the whole ROI thing, calculate return on investment to be able to show the organization because the, the objective beyond just having them build capacity enough to move to mm -hmm. other places was also mm -hmm. to build their capacity on the job. You understand? Yeah. So their turnaround time, we worked in things like their turnaround time on calls. How quickly mm -hmm. do they wrap up a call? How quickly are they on the draw regarding providing solutions to customers? How quickly, mm -hmm. how, how efficiently, how effectively are those solutions they give? So all those things are measurable. And, yeah. and, and obviously what we did was we worked all of those measures into the, the training program itself to be able to show value to the organization because that's the only reason why they've allowed us to continue rolling out that process. It's a very expensive process. So Excellent. that's the only reason why they've allowed us to continue to do so. Um, so and the process, and if I jump in, the process is obviously that means you've evaluated this already. You've done all the forms, you've done the assessments, you've done the checks, and yes. then they've, you've now evaluated it. And for you to say that they've allowed you to continue rolling it out, that means the evaluation was very positive. Positive evaluations Definitely. came out of it. And Definitely. you you mentioned ROI, the return on investment. Uh, do yes. you have a rate? What was the return on investment as a percentage? What, what was it? Well, like I said, it, there were different aspects of it. So it was mm -hmm. all about what was what uh, measurement or rather what return was expected at mm -hmm. a particular time or what a return was being measured at a particular time. Okay. So... so one of the key measures for the people in customer service, of course, they are they are more interested in 
how efficient are people how much better are people on the job for the employee it was about how have i been how much of my capacity has been built so much so that i'm able to get another role outside customer service if i'm so interested or even outside the organization because we're not just looking at within the organization we're looking at giving back to these people because they do a lot of work giving back to them enough to ensure that the, their whole life is not just built them, on... them. okay so let's talk about one of the measures one of the measures we we're looking at was turnaround time average turnaround time on calls ideally um in mtn at the point it, it used to be two minutes 20 seconds mm -hmm. on the average yeah. it was that high i mean the customer calls in with a basic inquiry a customer service person possibly ends up spending two minutes 20 seconds and there was no guarantee that this person would be able to give a first-hand solution to that person and close exactly so most likely it would have to escalate it would have to do all of that and sometimes in communication communicating the escalation they would not be clear in their in their email so there will be that back and forth from the guys who are supposed to support at the back end who go and come back and say what are you talking about i don't understand what you are talking about that back and forth can take another two or three days so the service levels were being eroded nobody was keeping with the service levels and all of that but with so the training we were able to do we're able to enhance communication skills we're able to enhance interpersonal communication skills we're able to en enhance stakeholder management skills and we're able to even enhance their technical skill in addressing customers and that's significantly reduced so in two years I think the last time I partook in that measurement must have been sometime in February. And I think in two years, we've been able to move from that average 2 minutes 20 seconds to about 198. To someone who is listening, it might not sound significant. Uh, when you think about it, that we moved from 198. 1 minute 58 seconds, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, that, so, that is that, that 22, is seconds. 22 seconds. Now, 22 exactly. seconds is huge if you think about it in the about millions of calls that come in. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. If you think about it in one second, in, in looking at just one person, you'll be like, so what's the big deal? You moved from an average handling time of 2 minutes 20 seconds to 158 seconds on the average. What's the big deal? But when you think about the fact that millions of calls come into the MTN call center every day, millions, literally millions of calls coming. And you consider that you're shaving off 22 seconds, 22 seconds on each of those calls, then it becomes yeah. a big deal and you begin yeah. to realize yeah. you you know, the money for the each money second, for you each can second. even calculate it. Exactly, you can calculate it down, down yeah. to it. So that, that is how effective trading can be. You do not realize it until you put a value to it um if you don't put a value to it you won't realize the effectiveness of what you've done and the organization if you don't help the organization itself see it because it take it took us reporting it and showing the organization that you know we are shaving off 22 we've shaved off 22 seconds in early two years with the same people you've not had new people though these are the exactly. same set of people that were doing this but because of this training now even they themselves will tell you that they, are, they, they feel better it's no longer so much of a struggle attending to customers anymore because now they are equipped with the relevant skills that will help them connect better with these people, communicate better with these people, and they're able to service them better. It's to their own welfare. So you had, uh, and that's what we measured was reduction in, in sick leave. It, it, it was tremendous. We didn't know all these things until we began to measure. measure. Measurement is yeah. key. It's key. extremely it's important. It's everything. You cannot you know, change cannot what you change don't measure. measure. Yeah. So exactly. that's, cool. that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Another aspect another of it is because of that evaluation, evaluation. Yes. it will have a direct have impact a direct on future impact. projects. So, so you managers, your execs will say, okay, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's see. Let's do this future project. The previous yeah. one was so successful. So, yeah. so that is the ID process. The yeah. ID process, I'm just summarize it for everybody. The ID process, we've gone through analyze or yeah. analysis. You do your analysis stage. We go through the detailed analysis stage like we've discussed. As, yeah. And then we go through the design stage and there's a back and forth between analysis and design. It's not just, oh, yeah. finish one, go to the next. You keep going back and forth in this process. So design yeah. stage is next. 
then the development stage is after that so you've designed it it's like for me it's in my head uh, and for femi femi i mean they sat down i went through a detailed design process and identified a pilot team and that pilot team now formed part of the development of the course of the itself course. yeah Yes, and after development, the next stage is implementation. So we've developed it, it's successful, let's implement. So yeah. we implement it, and then from implementation, obviously, it's the evaluation. So you yes. check and see, did we meet those initial objectives we wrote during the analyze, uh, analysis and design phase? Did we yes. meet those objectives? So the whole process of ADI is it just goes round and round and you continuously check, continuously change things. So yes. obviously for now, let's assume many customers don't call in. They decide to chat. So that's the next thing. Part of the training is, oh, our guys need to learn how to Social media skills. Yeah. Yes, they need social media skills. Our customers are going online. They're millennials. Yeah. They're not calling as much as before. So how do we approach this? They need retooling, relearning. Exactly. And we've gone, back, we've gone back to the analyze stage. Yeah. Then we design, we develop. So it's a cycle. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle. It keeps going. It's a cycle. And that is the yeah. ADI model. Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me just add something, David, that, you know, um, one thing that the ADI model does, if you implement it, um, effectively, one thing it does, if, especially if you Im implement it in an organization, what it does for that organization is, it, is that it helps the organization evolve an ongoing learning culture. So, um, and that's what you want, want essentially, where people do not wait until such a time when they are pulled out of a, of work to sit in a classroom before they realize they are learning. Mm -hmm. What the ADI model does, it 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 helps you identify. You know different diverse modes of learning of 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 knowledge impartation so much so that every employee you know you are you are implementing ultimately what you call it and that's the key thing in learning culture having a learning culture is key that is the most one of the most important parts of this whole process having a learning culture and with this process with this implementation and the fact that learning and development and hr is integral to the overall company's well-being and everybody in the organization understanding the importance of this process and the importance of of teaching and learning and continuous learning and the fact that our customers are changing and we need to change with them that process using this model and implementing it effectively and evaluating it will lead to much better returns on investment much better happier staff happier customers and successful businesses so, yes. so that's really the, the the aim so so yeah. thanks very much for me it's so wonderful that you could share your experience with us uh, sorry well, thank you so much for this opportunity yeah yes. yeah there are quite a number but hopefully we would, we would be able to do this um sometime soon maybe in a larger capacity and then definitely without yes. all of the network interruptions Yes. yes um, yes. thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Femi. And thank thanks for everybody that everybody. could log on. Later on we're yeah. going to load this, we'll edit it and load it onto our YouTube channel. So watch out for that. Yeah. So thank you very much and thanks to our guests.